Big game hunting season is just around the corner and to prime your pump, we've got an awesome 25 out six deer hunting story. Gavin Gee here from ultimatereloader.com. I'm back with a familiar face. Guy, thank you for coming back to the channel, man. Thank you, thanks for having me. We've done a couple videos together. We did a special on 30 out six brass. We've done revolver versus semi-auto for home defense. Guy, is a cool guy. Guy's a retired <laughs> Marine. Guy is a local police officer that retired from the force, a sniper instructor, hunter. He was president of the local gun range. Overall good guy. Guy, I'm really happy to have you back here on the channel. I'm awfully glad to be here, Gavin. I really am. <laughs> and here's the good news. Guy is not just here as a one-off kind of guest appearance type person here. Guy's going to be working on some really cool stuff that you guys have been asking for. Things like budget reloading things like let's keep it simple and go hunting that's kind of what this story that's is going to be about <laughs> that's right and uh, defensive handgunning we're going to be talking more about semi-auto and revolver work uh, and all sorts of other cool things that tie it all together like what kind of handgun what kind of sidearm are you going to take to alaska you know for that big that big game hunt where you might be toe-to-toe -to -toe with a grizzly this guy's done that <laughs> yes sir <laughs> So, if you have ideas for Guy, if you'd like to see him do something related to big game hunting or defensive handgunning or let's reload and let's keep it simple, let's do some budget gear and keep things basic, please drop a comment because we're going to be adding that to the suggestion box. Cool. Awesome. And so, we've got a hunting story to tell. That we do. So Guy, you've been hunting for quite a while. Yes, sir. Got my first hunting license 55 years ago. Wow. So it was the 60s? It was. Before it the was. Summer of Love? Before 67? I, I was 10. I didn't. Okay. The summer of Love and I, that, <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> right. And did you hunt with your, with your dad? Yeah. Mostly we did bird hunting. Dad uh, was a big time bird hunter, shotgunner. Mm -hmm. uh, doves, quail, pheasant, you know, that stuff. Ducks. Um, so I know you've got a lot of pictures to share. If you've ever seen any of Guy's pictures, he's got a lot of really, he's actually a wildlife photographer as well. I didn't even mention that. You know, uh, takes amazing bird photos. You Thank know, you. Big game, everything from grizzlies down to chucker. So really cool stuff. It's great to be here presenting with someone who's so passionate about the animals themselves, about the process of hunting. And then man, Guy cooks some amazing amazing meals. Every time I see your Facebook photos, my mouth is watering. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's fun. And that's the whole cycle. Go observe the wildlife, mm -hmm. uh, get to know it, hunt it, mm -hmm. um, bring the meat home, and make some good dinners for the family or friends. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about 25-06. This is your Remington 700 25-06. And I thought we were talking about this hunting story that you were telling me in the shop here the other day. Let's tell that story. Sure, sure, yeah. Uh, it's my favorite deer rifle, and uh, I like to hunt. I hunt uh, mostly in Washington, and I hunt in uh, Wyoming as well for the past 20 years or so. I've made quite a few trips to Wyoming. And why Wyoming? Wyoming, Wyoming has got it all. It is a perfect state for a hunter or an angler. Uh, you go there, and the west is right outside of Yellowstone National Park. In fact, a lot of Yellowstone is in Wyoming, most of it. Mm -hmm. So you've got the mountains and the rivers and all that. And then as you go farther and farther east, you get out into the Great Plains. And after reading mm -hmm. all about Lewis and Clark, I got fascinated mm -hmm. by the Great Plains. And that's where I like to hunt mule deer a lot. Gotcha. So... Let's hear about this. What year was this? This was this, this was 2009, and okay. it happened in uh, western Wyoming. Okay. Um, we headquartered out of the town of Cody. My, my partner and I got a, a motel room there. October <laughs> in Wyoming, the high country, and the motel room sounded a lot better than a tent. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And it was a lot better than a tent. So we stayed there and we hunted, and we hunted locally around, um, around Cody. I'd gotten permission to hunt on a big ranch. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of public property there too. And we were only hunting mule deer. We didn't have any antelope tags or anything, just mule deer. We weren't finding anything down there in the flatlands, in this mm -hmm. rolling sagebrush. Uh, saw a few bucks, but they were on property we couldn't access. Uh, saw a few does, but it was obvious that the herds had not come down out of the mountains. Mm -hmm. There were just a few deer. 
Now this is back in the days before you had Onyx hunting, right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there was, if there was anything like that, I sure didn't know about it, it was 2009. I have all that stuff now, but back then, no, you had to write to people and talk to people and ask permission and you know, phone calls and that sort of stuff. Knowing where you can hunt and where you can't hunt is kind of a, a different equation back then, a different process. So it's a lot easier now. It's really, really helpful to have that, that kind of tool. Okay. Yes. So not a whole lot of luck down on the lowlands. Right, we spent two days beating ourselves to death out there on the, uh, in the lowlands looking for deer. Um, no luck, so we kind of thought about it, regrouped. And I had a plan B in mind. I had plan B, we we're gonna go up and head into the hills, head west, get closer to Yellowstone, get a few thousand feet higher, mm -hmm. get in some more remote, rugged country, and see if that's where the deer still were. And they were. Nice. Yeah, it was a lot harder hunting up there, but it paid off. We pulled two muleys out of there. Mm, okay, so. so tell me about the first one. First one, my hunting buddy uh, saw the deer and uh, he decided that he was gonna take it. It was not a, we had hiked three miles in from the trailhead, three miles mm -hmm. up this canyon. Um, that was an interesting hike. Let's go back to that for a <laughs> okay. minute. Okay, Because we're, sure. find, we're finding mountain goat and we're finding bighorn mm -hmm. sheep along the way. And we found a few uh, deer tracks and that was good. And we found some black bear tracks and that was okay, no problem, black bear. Mm -hmm. And then we get a little deeper into the canyon. There's only one trail going up this canyon, steep, deep canyon leading uphill. And we're on this trail and suddenly we're finding grizzly tracks with grizzly cub tracks inside them. <laughs> so now we know that we're actually following a sow grizzly and her cub, and suddenly your 25-06 doesn't seem like very much of a rifle. Yeah, now tell me about the track identification, right? There's ob obviously typically gonna be a size difference. Sure, right? but that's but not the only difference because you get some big black bears too. Sure, yeah. Um, on, the, on the black bear, the claws are very tightly hooked, very hook-shaped and you'll see the imprints of the, of the claws close to the paw, mm -hmm. the pad of the paw. Gotcha. On the grizzly, they've got long claws, mm -hmm. and those tips are way out there, four or five inches sometimes ahead of the rest of the paw. It's a big difference. Wow. <laughs> yeah, and plus just the size of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you don't want to go into that kind of territory unprepared, and you want to use right. caution while you're in that territory. Right, no reason to, you know, no reason to look for a grizzly encounter. Sure. They, they don't work out well for man or the grizzly. Right, okay, so, so you're hiking along. This is, this is al along the pathway towards this first, this first deer, right? Right, Okay. and so we're going along, so we slow down a lot more. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. this grizzly's going the same direction we are, let's just give it some room and maybe it'll just keep on going. And it, it turns out it did, mm -hmm. but we didn't know that at the time. So we're going, we're hunting, and we see a few does here and there, and that's fine, looking for, see if there's any bucks around them. And eventually my buddy sees a decent buck. Now, mm -hmm. this is our third day of hunting, we've got five days. And so it's our third day of hunting, and he says, you know what, that's enough buck for me. He's taken some really big bruisers before. Mm -hmm. this, was a, this was a large, mature, only a three by three, it was a good buck, easy range, about 150 yards, as I mm -hmm. recall, and he uses his 270 and okay. shoots it. Um, it runs off a bit, runs about 100 yards and crashes in some trees, and we go find it, no problem. Gotcha. Now, it's late in the day. <laughs> We're worried. It's starting to starting to getting towards dusk. It's not there yet, but it's getting there. The smell of blood in the air. The smell of blood. <laughs> we haven't seen the grizzly. Don't know where the grizzly is. Don't know what else is up in that canyon. This is really not very very many miles from Yellowstone. We're gotcha. within ten miles of Yellowstone Park, mm -hmm. and so grizzly country. And so we went ahead and we made our decision that we're not gonna try and take the whole deer apart and get it out that night. We're mm -hmm. gonna go ahead and we field dress the deer and we pulled the carcass away from the gut pile, mm -hmm. quite a ways away, and then covered it with a sweaty old man shirt, you know, stinky, sweaty man shirt, hoping that that would be enough to keep the predators off. Yep. And then we left. We had three miles, rugged country, back to the trailhead. Was it head. still light at this point, enough it to was, see? It was light, okay, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, I don't think we ever had to go to the headlamps on that trip mm -hmm. out. It was, it was close, though. Mm -hmm. It was pretty dark by the time we got back to the truck. Get out of there go to Cody, something to eat. <laughs> Next morning, come on back in. And I gotta tell you, I was walking in there with my head on a swivel. The closer we got to that carcass, it's three <laughs> miles in, yeah. uphill, 
and getting more and more remote country and a yeah. little thicker timber there where the deer was and all this. <laughs> and my head was on a swivel. I was looking for that bear. Um, bear was long gone. I think the bear had figured out there were a couple hunters there and mm -hmm. decided to take the the cub and get out of that yeah. drainage. So that was good. They don't want anything to do with you. If Not typically. Can, yeah. yeah. Avoid so the, and we were just worried that it might have claimed our kill. Right. And uh, wanted to avoid that scenario. Sure. So yeah. we get there. Carcass is untouched. That's a good thing. And so we bone it out. We've got no pack horses, no ATVs. We have backpacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, neither one of us was exactly a spring chicken even then. <laughs> um, I was in my 50s at that point. So we go ahead and bone out the animal. We're not taking a single bone with us, mm -hmm. except for, of course, he wanted the, the skull and the antlers. Sure. Um, Up atop the backpack. Right. Yeah. And the rest of the backpack was full of just meat. All the bones mm -hmm. stayed where they were. We took, cleaned the rib cage, got them all off of the, the shoulders and the hams and the legs, got all that good meat, put that in our backpacks. Well, it's getting late again. Now we're walking back out in late afternoon, three miles on back to the truck, and we really don't, in, in a backpack full of bloody meat. Right. So. <laughs> At any rate, no, no incidences with bears or anything, good. but yeah, it was very good. But we were mm -hmm. worried the whole way out. Yeah. So, yeah. I like to carry a 44 Magnum, you know, for those kinds of scenarios. My 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum is a little unwieldy for, they are. <laughs> for yeah. backcountry yeah. carry. But, uh, you know, it's good to have that. And then, of course, your hunting rifle, mm -hmm. you know, as, as a duo of, of protection. So day two, or th there was the day of getting the deer, the day of taking care of the deer, right? Now you're on your last day. No, now I'm on the last day of the hunt, <laughs> and I haven't taken a shot. Uh, I haven't seen a deer to shoot at, except the one my buddy got. You've driven 900 miles. We've driven, yeah, yeah about 800 miles to Kay. that point, yeah. Yeah, so um, you're and invested. And I got one day left. Right. And it's like, okay, um, <laughs> you gotta, gotta go home with a deer. Mm -hmm. And my tag was good for buck or doe. And that thought started creeping into my mind a lot on that last day. And we hiked in again about three miles, set up where there was a good observation point. We mm -hmm. do most of our hunting there with our binoculars. Mm -hmm. You're glassing, glassing, glassing. And eventually, uh, we're there. It's fairly early in the day still. And we get a group of does that comes out of the tree line and close to a half mile away. But they're starting to move sort of diagonally towards us, and they're mm -hmm. up on a high canyon wall. There's a big canyon between us and them. Did you have favorable wind? We had. The wind was perfect. The wind was nice. coming up the canyon. Nice. Yeah, which was kind of neat. <laughs> um, absolutely, and it wasn't much wind. Um, but yeah, that, that worked out in our favor. So about that time, I started to think that, you know, that dough looks pretty delicious. <laughs> um, now, from these doughs, were you picking like a larger yes. example? Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and wanted one, if I could find one that did not have a fawn tagging mm -hmm. along with it, which I did. I mm -hmm. um, thought that was a good deal. So yeah, go ahead and I'm, I'm starting to set up, prone won't work. We're on the, on the hillside, a little bit on the forward slope of the hill. Yep. Prone won't work, I'm trying to shoot uphill. Right. So I go to a sitting and I'm getting and, my... And you've got a six power scope, right? Got a six, six power scope. Six, six power loophole. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's my favorite hunting scope. Yep. Um, yeah, and, and so I go to go sitting and put my rifle on a set of cross sticks, mm -hmm. uh, shooting sticks, and then I realized just a few yards away, there's a great big old snag of a dead tree, and at about four and a half feet off the ground, mm -hmm. it's got a huge big dead branch sticking out. And I looked at that and I said, I'm gonna try this. And so I go over <laughs> there and I stand, mm -hmm. and I use my arm to pad the rifle, put the rifle on there, and I'm looking up right at the doe. And we've ranged with a laser, and mm -hmm. she's almost exactly 400 yards away. Yep. I'm sighted in at 300 yards with those Burger VLDs moving pretty fast. Yep. And so I just held up towards the top of her back, right on the shoulder, mm -hmm. squeezed one off. It was instant lights out, just the off button, collapses. Um, just what you want to see. Exactly what you want to see. Yeah. You know, as a hunter, that's very rewarding. You did your job. Yeah. You, you know, you found your animal, you made the shot, nice, quick, clean kill, mm -hmm. no messy follow-up. It was great. Um, and then my buddy looks at me, did you, did you have to shoot one that far away? Because it was a long way. <laughs> right. We had to go down the canyon, up the canyon, yep. it, 400 yards straight line, but it was probably a half mile of hard So hiking. check out this picture. We're going to show you the picture of where guy was shooting from. This is a reenactment. It shows you just how far 400 yards is away, especially across the canyon. And it's funny, you know, by the cabin here, we have steel targets set up at exactly 400 yards. Excellent. And there's a canyon. So I know exactly kind of 
it, you know, what you had to deal with there. Yeah. And that, that, that's kind of an endeavor, but, uh, but you were able to get there. Right. I take it. Got yep. there. Took that deer apart, the two of us working. She was a little smaller than, than his buck was, mm -hmm. so it went faster and uh, split the load up into the two backpacks and hi hiked on out there. Awesome. That was, uh, that was the end of the hunt. The next morning, we headed for headed for home. Nice. And how, how was the meat from that particular deal? Excellent. Excellent. Uh, rarely have I had bad meat. A lot of people tell me that the mule deer tastes trashy. <laughs> Not in my experience. Yeah. That's one of the reasons I keep hunting. I love to hunt them. To me, they're an iconic symbol of the West. I just mm -hmm. love those big blocky, you know, deer. Yep. I, if I can take a, you know, buck legally, of course I do. And if I can get a bigger buck, of course, I, you know, I do that. Yeah. But uh, I have no problem if the doe is legal game. Sure. You know, awesome. I'll do that too. And yeah, the meat was wonderful. That's awesome. What a good time with your friends and meat for the family. So next, let's talk about twenty-five out six. Twenty-five out six. Who would have known this is such a versatile hunting cartridge? Well, some of us knew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 25 out 6 has actually been around for a long time, hasn't it? It has. Close to 100 years ago, it was wildcatted by necking down the 30 out 6 mm -hmm. to a 25 caliber. It uh, didn't really pick up a lot of speed and all, and literally speed, uh, mm -hmm. until the slow burning powders came out after World War II. Right. You know, like H4831 and those kind of things. Hmm. And then, uh, 1969, Remington made it a factory cartridge. Oh, awesome. Okay. You already covered that it's basically a 30 out six neck down, and there's mm -hmm. a bunch of necked down. You could call them wildcats, you know, whatever you want to call them. You've got 280, 270, 65, out six. Right. I think that's pretty interesting. I think I might have to try that. You've got uh, 25 out six, which we're talking about. You've got, you've got. Uh, there's actually a six millimeter out six. It's which, a wildcat. Okay, and so that's slightly different than the 243. Yeah, it's then? a longer case. It's full okay. length case. Gotcha. So yeah. So if any of those are of interest, again, drop a comment, or if you have experiences with any of those 30-06 Wildcats, let us know. Let us know how they're working for you. Anyways, back to 25-06. Back to 25-06. <laughs> so this is not a new cartridge, so mm -hmm. it, until recently, people weren't building fast twist barrels for it. Mm -hmm. So you always had this one in 10 twist, and Which it is was, what you've got here, is that right? Right, right. Okay. So you're limited in your bullet weight, mm -hmm. your bullet length. Uh, most of the time they topped out around 115 to 120 grains. So a lot of people hunted with 100 grain, 117 grain, 115 grain. Mm -hmm. Those were your common deer hunting bullets with this rifle. But all the way down to 70, you're saying? 75, I think, is about okay, the 75. lightest. And that's a, that's a, supposed to be awesome on rock trucks. Screamer? I've never used it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Rock trucks. We have a bunch of those around yes, here. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And what kind of velocities are you getting? Uh, with my hunting loads, I'm seeing usually 3,100 to almost 3,200 feet per second with the 115s. Mm -hmm. And when I tried some 100 grainers for a couple of years, I was at 3,340. Wow. Okay, so for perspective, a typical 30 out 6 cartridge is going to, a load is going to get you about 2,800 ish? 27, 28, maybe 29, yeah. most of them. Uh, there's some, some faster ones, but that's, mm -hmm. yeah, that's an average 30 out 6. So this is. You know, several hundred feet per second faster and a lot less bullet, so I get something I really like out of it, light recoil. Yeah. It's a very easy rifle to shoot. Which is probably going to be something like going to S65 Creedmoor, right? It's part of that value proposition. You've got less recoil. Right. You've still got good barrel life. You know, you've got that optimization for that longer high BC bullet, which you won't have in the 30-06 variants, but in this case, you don't need it. No, and barrel life on a 25-06 that's so -so? a lot of gunpowder and, <laughs> and a little bore. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I don't, I'm not sure where I'm up to in the lands on there now, yep. but it's well, longer than it was. How many big game animal have you taken with this approximately? Roughly a dozen mule deer, two prong horns, um, quite a few coyotes, and mm -hmm. a few rock chucks, unfortunate rock chucks. <laughs> So it sounds like your rifle has more than paid for itself. Oh, absolutely. Great <laughs> rifle. Very, very worthwhile. For the game I hunt, uh, very worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, another nice thing about the 25 out 6, you can find factory brass yes. and you can find factory ammunition, right? Yes. When it's been around for 100 years, you know that's reloading dies, anything is going to be pretty much off the shelf. It, it's all there. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about your rifle a little bit. I'm going to grab this 
and handle it. You've got a 30 out six, don't you? That's almost a clone of this. Is yes, right? the 25 out six and the 30 out six are both Remington 700 CDLs. Mm -hmm. Mine are. Um, both of them with six power loop holds. Uh, both of them pillar bedded. Uh, yeah, they're very similar. My two rifles are very similar. Very, very good hunting setup. And the loop hold fixed six power. Tell me about why you chose that. I really like the simplicity of the six power, of mm -hmm. the fixed power. Uh, they're very rugged scopes. They have fewer parts to go wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have as many lenses in them. Uh, Loophole tends to put a really nice set of glass, especially in the 6x42s, mm -hmm. but the 6x36 version, the smaller, more compact version, also has very good glass. I've, mm -hmm. I've got one of each. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and they are, they're rugged, they're simple. I'm one of these guys with my hunting rifles. I like to sight it in and leave that zero alone, mm -hmm. not be mucking around with trying to worry about if I'm at three power or 10 power. Sure. Um, no, I know it's at six power. I pick it up, I shoot it, boom. And I've had kills with this rifle from 20 yards out to 420 yards. Mm -hmm. No problem. So yeah, and, and it's there's, enough. There's something to be said for that simplicity. I remember when I took my Black Bear, I was out of focus. So, you know, my parallax wasn't set set right and it still you know all worked out just fine but Good. magnification yeah parallax all those extra things to think about obviously you're gonna if you're gonna shoot out to further distances you know those are gonna be important things yes. but I think for hunting rifle keeping it simple can be a really really good strategy it, it's well it's worked out for me um, <laughs> less things to deal with you know I'm mm -hmm. a simple man I guess yep um, <laughs> and, and, I, and I like I like keeping it that way it's just the rifle is zeroed the ammo stays mostly the same I've changed the load a little bit over mm -hmm. the years uh, but not much mm -hmm. and I just know that every time I pull it out of the gun safe and go to the range it's sighted in where it's supposed to be and I know what to do when I get in the field with it yep love it Okay, so let's talk about your load. This load, the exact one that you used this for, load for this the for the for the 400 yard yep. shot. Yeah, um, I built a load around the Burger VLD. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a good hunting bullet, especially I think for deer size game and smaller. It tends to penetrate a few inches, get into that chest cavity, and then expand very violently, mm -hmm. inflicting very fast death. I've, mm -hmm. I've only shot three mule deer with that bullet, but they were all three instant drops. I like it. Uh, very impressive, yeah. Um, I used my Nosler brass. I tend to treat this thing like a match cartridge because I wanted that 400 yard accuracy. Mm -hmm. So I'm loading on Wilson dies, a mm -hmm. Wilson uh, neck sizing die, and then Wilson cedar. Nice, the and inline cedar with the, the arbor cedar. press. Yep, yep. use my little arbor press on that. Um, using a match grade primer, good brass, in this case Nosler brass. The Burger Bullet, which is held to very tight tolerances, has wonderful accuracy potential. Mm -hmm. That was a really good load. Um, I happen to have some Hodgdon Rotumbo on hand, and so I'm looking through the manual, and I find that they've got a wonderful looking load for 117 grain Hornady with Rotumbo. Gotcha. And I scratched my head a little bit and said, I will try to work up to that with the Burger. Mm -hmm. And I did, and by golly, it was accurate and effective. Nice. And fast, 3190. Wow. Yeah, that is fast. So this low data, treat this as just uh, an offline example. Always validate, you know, with with factory data from the component manufacturers and all that. But that's that's great performance. And that 115 grain bullet, do you consider that to be kind of in the sweet spot in terms of the 25 out six? I do. I like those 115s, 117s. The mm -hmm. 120s are fine too. The hundreds are good. Um, some of the hundreds are better than others. You're getting a lot of velocity there, and if you have too soft of a bullet, uh, you run a chance of it overexpanding on impact mm -hmm. and under penetrating. Mm -hmm. But something like a, a solid bullet, you know, mm -hmm. one of those, one of those uh, barns monolithic or like barns, yeah. or yeah, one of those would be great for at that cartridge yeah. at that velocity. At 3340 is moving right along. Oh yeah, I like about this package this cartridge and this rifle that you've got the versatility around here I've got rock checks and you might not have time to go grab a different rifle right and then you've got mule deer all through the canyon here and what would you think about this for black bear you know I've had friends who've taken black bear with it just fine and mm -hmm. even elk with oh, a wow. 25 out six yep. uh, making they're making sure that they're using a good bullet and that they place their shots well and mm. it works um, I have hunted elk with it didn't shoot an elk with it and then I said, you know what, I've probably got a, a bigger, better rifle for elk hunting. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the way I went. But would I carry it on an elk hunt? 
Yeah, yeah, with something like a 115 or 120 grain Nosler partition or one of the Barnes TSX mm -hmm. bullets. Yeah, I'd use that. Awesome, okay. You've piqued my curiosity about this cartridge. So, how about you guys? What do you think of the 25-06? What do you think of these other cartridges? Do you have any other stories you'd like to hear from Guy? He's taken pretty much every kind of bear and <laughs> every kind of everything. So he knows a lot about hunting, a lot more than I do. Um, I always like to hunt with guys like Guy because I'm always looking for pointers about how to best deal with you know, field dressing and, and taking all the meat out and, you know, making the most of the whole thing. It's important that, uh, you know, getting that meat out to me, that's way up there on the priority list. Mm -hmm. You know, a good hunt, a good satisfying one shot, clean kill, instant drop, I love mm -hmm. that. Um, and then getting that meat out and bringing that home and preparing good food for friends and family. Yeah. And, and myself. Do, and doing it in an elegant way where you're just, you're, you're confident you know what I mean? First time you got a big animal, it's going to be precarious. Don't poke this, don't poke that, right? All that right. stuff. And uh, so I'm hoping to expand on my skill set there. Maybe you can help me. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Guy, for coming back. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, and all you just know that Guy's going to be back. If, again, if you have special asks or content that you'd like us to look at, drop a comment. That concludes this video, and that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.